Hi, my name is Emily. I'm going to be performing the skill video administration of subcutaneous injection. I'm in the appropriate school attire, wearing shoes, badges visible, no polish, no clip, nails, no jewelry. To start the skill off, I will gather my supplies for the video, a pair of gloves, gauze, two alcohol wipes, medication vial, and then um, the needle syringe needed for this skill video is 29 or 30 gauge half inch needle one milliliter syringe. But due to supplies that um, we were given, this is what I will be using. All right. Next, I will verify the six rights of patient. Excuse me, of medication administration. That is right patient, right medication, right dose, right route, right time, and right documentation. Then I will check the medication ordered in the HR and verify that against the MAR. I have to do that three times for ever giving medication to a patient. So this will be my first verification out of three. The order reads um, heparin injection, one dose, um, 1,000 units. I um, have to do dimensional analysis for any dosage uh, calculation needed, so I wrote it on a post-it note. There's nothing on the back. What it reads, calculation, and what I have on hand, tell me 10 milliliters per 10,000 units, and I multiply that by 1,000 units over 1, equaling 1 ml. I'm going to put that aside. So, my patient will be receiving one milliliter of uh, pepper. Um, my supplies are ready to go, so I will head to my patient's room. We'll knock, enter, close the door behind me to ensure patient privacy and to avoid any HIPAA violations. Set my supplies down on a clean, dry, flat surface. Hand hygiene and introduce myself to the patient. Hi, Mrs. Smith. My name is Emily. Can I please have your name and date of birth? As I verify with their wristband, and that will count as my two patient identifier. Thank you. That is correct. Do you have any allergies that I need to be made aware of? No allergies. Now that I have laid eyes on my patient and verified their wristband, this will be, I would um, check my medication against some more uh, two times out of three. All right, Ms. Smith. Well, as you can probably see here, I have stuff for an injection. Your uh, physician ordered you to have a heparin injection. And the mechanism of action for that uh, medication is that it's an anticoagulant. It uh, prevents thrombin and fibrin formation, therefore preventing uh, blood clots to form. Um, the use of this medication, as I said, is to prevent blood clots. It's, uh, there's uh, many different reasons it can be used, but some common ones is if a patient is undergoing any surgery, they may give it, or through IV, or in your case, um, your medical condition where you get DVTs. So there are some common side effects that go along with this medication. Um, they're considered common side effects, but even though they are considered common, we need to make sure that they don't progress or prolong in any way because that can be a concern. So if any of these side effects um, seem to not stop, please let me know. Um, some common ones could be you could easily bruise, um, or excuse me, you could bruise more easily than you used to maybe before you got the injection. If you were to get a cut anywhere in your body or even at injection sites, they may take a little bit longer to clot, the blood to clot, and also where you would uh, get your injections done at. Over time, you might start to see some discoloration, um, probably bruising. Um, again, if any of this seems to get any worse, let me know. Now, there are also some possible um, adverse reactions to this medication. These we do not want to take place. If they do, they require immediate um, uh, assessment, and I will notify the um, position. And they could be severe abdominal pain, if you notice any blood or urine in your stool, or if you start to cough up any blood. If anything like that happens, please let me know immediately, okay? Also, um, upon injection, you may notice a slight stinging or burning sensation. Unfortunately, that can be normal as well, so I just wanted to make you aware of that. Do you have any questions for me? No? No questions? Okay. At this point, I would hear if I may, uh, medication against some more for my third and last time. All right, I'm going to come over here and hand hygiene and get started. All right, so to start off with, I'm going to a medication vial and alcohol wipe. We'll clean the top of the medication vial. And then we'll dispose of this in my trash. All right, next, while that dries, I will draw up the appropriate amount of air. Again, one milliliter. Dispose of this. All right, holding like a pencil, needle up, cap on, draw the air into the syringe here. 
One milliliter. Uh, yep, there we go. Okay, and then next, using these two fingers, I will remove the cap, inject into the medication valve here, administer the air, invert, and again, drawing the solution to one milliliters. All right, so, okay, there's no air bubbles, but we need to make sure when drawing solution into a syringe that air bubbles aren't in there. If they happen to be, you can either tap it, or in some cases you have to fully um, inject the medication back into the vial and then withdraw again. There are no bubbles. Oh, it's kind of hard to see. Okay. Put back here. Okay. I have to recap the needle. Um, typically you're not supposed to do that, but in the case that I have to, so I would use a swoop method. So I will remove the needle. See, just scoop it on top, come on the side, and recap. The medication is ready for use. See, one milliliter. Okay. All right. I'm going to put my vial aside since I'm finished with it. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to um, select the appropriate site for injection. For a subcutaneous injection, there are three places that they can um, take place at. In the upper arm, the thigh, or in the abdomen. My patient, um, due to rotation, she wants her um, injection site in her abdomen. Now, where that needs to take place at is either left or right of the umbilicus, but below the costal margin. So that's me right here on my patient, right smack in the middle. Um, after selecting the appropriate site, I want to assess the site for any complications. That could be any bruising, any sign of inflammation, any edema, any sign of infection. I also want to gently palpate the site, make sure there aren't any masses or complaints of any tenderness. The site is um, appropriate for use. Next, I want to come up here and pinch. Anyways, I want to pinch the skin, get my needle here, and I need to make sure that my needle length, I'm going to be measuring from top of the skin fold to the bottom. I want to make sure my needle length measures half of the skin fold. It does. So that is okay for use. Then I'll get my alcohol wipe and clean the site starting at the center and working my way out two inches. All right, dispose of this. Now that I have uh, cleaned the site, I want to make sure I do not touch directly in the middle there of the injection site. Oh, excuse me. All right, um, next it is ready to for injection. When injecting, I want to make sure I use these two fingers. Hold here, remove the cap, like so. Get that there. I need to, once again, pinch the skin, create a skin fold like that. I want to um, quickly and firmly inject the needle into the skin at a 45 to 90 degree angle, just like a dart, palm down. So I will inject. There we go. And I release the skin fold, grasp the bottom here at the lower end of the syringe with my non-dominant hand, then come up here with my dominant hand and slowly inject the medication into my patient's abdomen here. There we go. Okay, come back here. So, uh, hold with my dominant hand, grab my um, gauze pad, remove the needle, gently place the gauze pad on top, dispose of my needle immediately into the shrubs container. Okay, when I put the gauze pad on top, I do not want to rub or massage or anything like that. I put it on top to um, make sure there's no bleeding. There's no bleeding, so no need for a band-aid. So I will gather the rest of my supplies and dispose of them. Oh, there we go. Mrs. Smith, are you comfortable? She is comfortable. Uh, she has a collate and her bed is in the appropriate position. I'm going to remove my gloves, dispose of my trash here, hand hygiene and go document my results.